All right, so our second presenter of the day at Big Talk and Small Libraries is Rosemary Cooper. She is the library director at the Albert Wisner Public Library in Warwick, New York, and um, they are the winner just announced um, about a month ago of the Best Small Library in America Award for 2016 by Library Journal Magazine. Congratulations, Rosemary. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, as I said, I am here in Nebraska, but New York is my home state. I am originally from upstate New York, <laughs> so um, this is. I was really happy to see someone from my home state uh, win the award this year. Well, we were delighted too, being the first library in New York State that actually has won the award. is special. <gasps> oh, mm -hmm. yeah. They they go they're all over the place with that, which is great. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So and um. I invited Rosemary to join us here on Big Talk from Small Libraries to talk about how they did it, how they um, got um, the award and what went into that. And So I will just um, hand over to you, Rosemary, to tell us all about your library. Great. Thank you very much. I'm really very privileged and honored to be here to talk to you about this. We're still, you know, in the honeymoon glow from this. We're completely unexpected for our for our little library to receive this award, but we worked very hard on the application. And I have to say, having listened to Kathy earlier, you know, the enthusiasm and the creativity that abounds in public libraries all over our country and our continent and uh, is, is pretty inspiring. So I do this very humbly um, as well. I'm here really, um, Krista, to just share our story with you and all of the other folks who have decided to listen in on this um, and that they may be inspired to do not only the best they can, which I'm sure all of you already are doing, but to tell that story and tell that story as widely and loudly and enthusiastically as possible. Our story really began when I came to this little community in upstate New York, Warwick, New York, 60 miles from Manhattan. Um, I was a librarian. I'm just trying to move my slides here. What's going on? Are you with me? Uh, yes, we are. Um, you might yeah, have to go ahead and you might have to click on the slides to get oh, there we go oh, okay sorry folks there you are that no is me right there I am a live human being I have actually um, grew up in New York State in Westchester County I got my library degree in 1979 at Pratt Institute um, in Brooklyn New York and worked in small uh, business advertising libraries until 1980 when I moved to Burlington Vermont and began working my public library career at the Fletcher Free Library in Burlington Vermont the very same year that that Bernie Sanders, some of you may know, presidential candidate, was elected mayor. Mm -hmm. And that was 35 years ago. I started in, in Burlington, Vermont, and then crisscrossed uh, uh, back over to California, spent some time over there in Pasadena, in San Bernardino, and then went up to Idaho, to Boise, so, and then found my way back home here in 2001. Um, right after, as many of you will remember, something terribly horrible happened to our country, uh, that the World Trade Center was were, were bombed, and it was a, it was where the planes flew into the World Trade Center. Excuse me, and it was a really pretty scary time to be back here. But it was also for me a tip, a pretty challenging time because I moved from a career in public libraries that had spanned from the 80s now for 20 years, and I was mostly in medium-sized libraries and administrative positions, larger sized libraries, certainly none that would qualify as a small library. And here I came upon an opportunity um, on my way back home to take over a challenge here at the Albert Wisner Public Library in Warwick, New York. And that challenge was that we were a community growing um, in, up in the re these reaches of Orange County. Our population was just exploding. Our library, as you can see here, um, this is our old library. Our, this library was built in 1927, and it was it's the library that I came to in 2001. This library had a small ex um, expansion on the back of it, but had not really been updated or was able to keep up with the fast changing demands and pace that this large, uh, at this point now, semi-suburban rural community was demanding of its library. And I was pretty daunted by the challenge myself, because I figured, you know, who am I to 
make a difference in this town if this library was satisfactory to everyone. But for a variety of reasons, I took the full mantle and the full challenge on, and I, though I went in somewhat reluctantly, I quickly embraced the challenge of trying to bring this library, this beautiful, well-loved, traditional building and the library and its services into the 21st century. And I began that in 2001. Shortly after um, 2001, the Library Journal decided to initiate this award for the best small library in America. And I remember very distinctly sitting in my little office in this very building saying to myself, well, that's something that we should try for. I know we need a new building, and that's going to be the focus of my next six or seven years here. Um, but we really should be thinking long term. And the reason we want to bring this new library into our community is because we want it to be a wonderful place for people to center of their lives and a place that really has some kind of impact and meaning to every single person who lives there. So just to give you a sense of our community also, I have a couple of other slides here. Here's a picture of Warwick in 1887. It's a little fuzzy, but um, Warwick hasn't really changed that much since 1887, except that all of those vacant spaces there are now filled in with homes. It's still um, very beautiful and pastoral, but there are lots and lots of homes. It's 108 square miles, so while it's a, we are a small library, we're by no means a small library district. As I said before, we now serve 20 three to 24,000 people, which I know is on the upper edges of that uh, requirements for even this award. The limit is 25,000 service population. Um, and it, here's a map also that shows for those of you who are living west of the Mississippi. Um, this is a map that shows where those of us who are east of the Mississippi shows us where Warwick is. And it, it's sitting really very close to some pretty big places, but we are really pretty small. That being said, I'd like to move on to show you our new library. This is our brand new library. It actually was built in 2000. It was opened in 2009, and I'm going to show you some pictures of it uh, because it's a beautiful building that reflects the architectural um, quality of our area. In fact, our weather vane at the top of this building has a cow on it because there are cows in the field directly across from us, and we actually have a cow. Her name is Alberta, who is our mascot. This gives you another view of the front of that building on a lovely day, which today is similar outside here in Warwick, New York. This is one of our reading gardens on the side. Uh, this is the back side of our building, so some of you may say that doesn't look like a very small library, but it is 20,000 square feet. It is um, two stories. It is completely heated with a geothermal heating system, so it has a lot, lots of those fancy efficiencies built into it. But it has an outdoor performance space, which we are enhancing this year. As you can see, uh, there's a little platform there. We're going to be building up that. And here's the back side of the windows, which are this is one of my favorite shots of it. But anyway, so that's who we are. That's who I am. I've got a little bit of both. I, I want to tell you a little bit about our uh, we got to be on the cover of the February 1st, 2016 issue of Library Journal, which um, was pretty exciting and still is. We've got thousands of copies of this made all over. Um, this features our, some aspects of our application. The application process is um, sounds like it's pretty simple, and for those of you who may have undertaken it already, you may may um, resonate with this. It's they, We are actually required to complete a two-page application that answers questions related to why your library it should be nominated or should be awarded this award and what are some of the special things that it's doing as far as technology, community centers. There's, there's a various few things that they list. Uh, and they limit you to two pages. So we decided when it took us a while to decide to, when we were actually ready to apply for this award. We knew when we opened our building in 2009, we were nowhere near ready to do that yet. We needed to um, grow into the building. We needed to adjust to it. We needed to adapt to it. We needed to figure out how our community was going to respond to it and what it is that they wanted. And all that time, though, we were holding this in, you know, out there as a long-term goal to 
to present ourselves and share our story. So we spent the first um, several years and actually continue to spend a great deal of time listening to our community. And initially when we brought this new facility into our library, we live in Orange County, as I've told you, it's a relatively conservative area of the country. We, regardless of what many of you Westerners might think about the East Coast, New York City, it is not, even though it's 60 miles north of it, and there's lots of resistance to to taxes and tax increase and, and that kind of um, fight was something that we faced when we were building our building. Um, and, we, and because it was also the early 2000s, we still were getting some of those residual com uh, concerns that what do we need libraries for now that we have the computer and the internet. I think those arguments are harder to make now, when, now that the shine is off of the computer and the internet. I mean, we still obviously are using them. We're using them here today. They're important to our lives, but they're not, uh, they don't completely meet all of our needs. So we listen to our community. We open it up and wow, that's all I can say, were we surprised. Um, we have a parking lot of, for 60 spaces. Our previous library had two spaces and the first complaint we got was that our parking lot wasn't big enough. Um, we are now working actually on doubling the size of that parking lot just as a, a that's our major priority at the moment, but we had so many people from so many different parts of our community who came in and said, wow, this is incredible. We really want to be a part of that. So um, some of the things that we did and that we highlighted in our application um, were, I'm going to I'm going to start here with a few slides to tell you about that. We, we highlighted the basics, which those of you who have been in libraries as long as I know and in public libraries know that um, that service to children, young children, their parents and their caregivers is kind of our bread and butter. I think so. I hope I'm not offending anybody by saying that. And we do an outstanding job of that. This is just one of many, many programs, story times, toddler times, infant times, programs we have for, for uh, parents and children with special needs. If someone comes to us and asks us for something that they'd like to see happen in the library, we jump all over it and on it. So this is just a picture of one of the many programs that we offer. Here is a picture of um, our baby music program that we have, Melinda's Music. I could, sh I could probably spend my entire time here just sharing you pictures of all the programs we have for children. But we understand that this is our bread and butter, but we don't want to ignore the huge part of our community that is not uh, focused on young children and their, and their care and their education. So we have, in our community, have identified a large group of of uh, seniors, retired folks, older folks, uh, more active seniors. Um, and this particular, particular picture is just one of the many programs that we offer, which is a, um, an, a senior improv acting group. And that's basically all community supported and run by a community volunteer. And it's just one of many. We have a Monday afternoon movies for seniors that we show that 70 to 80 people come to every week with a film discussion. It's just uh, a lot of things going on. We have music from McFarland Drive and creative cultural programs. We offer something just called the Warwick Cafe Reading Project, which is a project where we put free copies of a particular book quarterly into all the we have eight cafes in our, our community and we leave them in there on a special shelf and encourage people to read them and share them and talk about them and they usually relate to programs that we're offering to the library right now the book that's in the cafes is Brooklyn um, which is the the uh, the novel based on the Academy Award nominated movie Brooklyn so um, we're in the process of selecting our spring 2016 one and that's done entirely by the community on our website um, through a voting process. We have a Warwick Children's Book Festival. That we, invite, we invite 50 children's authors and illustrators uh, to our community on, under a big tent and they meet with uh, anyone who's interested in children's literature and we sell our local books, sell our sales books. And that program typically attracts to 1,500 to 2,000 people each year. We do it every year now. It's been so popular. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the music from McFarland Drive, a quarterly series of music programs that in the nice weather we do outside to audiences of three and 400 people. All of these things would not have been possible in our previous facility, obviously not the reason. Um, to build a library isn't just to build a library, but it's to provide services and a place for the community to enjoy their lives uh, together and explore new things. Nothing you need, you need to hear from me. 
Um, this particular program is something we call Library Out Loud. It's actually podcasts where we interview uh, pro people who ha are doing a program at our library or a topic of interest in our community, and we make these available. They're 10 to 15 minutes off of our, on our website. We get close to 100, 200 listeners to each of these programs and find that they're very helpful for folks who can't actually get to the library but like to hear a little bit about all the things that are going on in it. Um, another important part, I heard Kathy talking about this earlier, is you know we have we can't do all this. We didn't actually increase our staff tremendously when we moved from 4,000 square feet to 20,000 square feet. We added three new part-time clerks, but we now do thousands of programs a year. How do we do all that? We do a lot of it through community partners who actually provide the programming and we provide the support for it, and that's something in our in our application to the best small libraries that we highlighted and that was actually um, noted by them where they said when we got the award announcement that we work so effectively with our community partners. The, this slide has two programs of, of the 15 different community partners that we work with. Um, Family Centrals provides an array of, of uh, parenting support programs at our library. Again, we don't need to either pay for these programs or um, have our staff do them. We just need to provide the support for Family Central to bring them in and they're very, very popular and very grassroots kind of group and always have large participation. The BYOB, which is, a, which is an effort of uh, the Warwick Sustainable Warwick Group, uh, they actually had this big kickoff at our library for this um, you know, banning plastic bags and actually we're successful here in our community to of doing that in our local towns and so we were a part of that. We certainly didn't do all of it. We were just, uh, you, the library became the central place where people in our community who want to share ideas or find a forum for discussion, they would know to come to the library and they didn't ever think of us that way in the past and that's something we did highlight in our application. So another thing we highlighted is, you know, this is a nice clear picture, isn't it? The, um, is that collections, libraries, of our bread and butter, I believe, of course, are is our content and access to collections and materials. And here you see a picture of a gentleman reading a, uh, underneath a piece of artwork that's part of another aspect of our library that I'll talk about in just a minute. But, but I felt it was really very important that our collections be updated, be weeded rigorously, be clean, be attractive, and be accessible, and that we expand our concept of what it is that we think a library should be lending. We lend whatever we is reasonable and what people ask us to lend. We right now lend, we lend a variety of kits for people to do crafts. We are in the process of putting together a tool lending program to, with some gardening programs that we're doing. So we are, you know, libraries are the initial sh um, sharers in this new sharing economy that we are. And this concept of sharing, we've been really good at. And I think we need to sell that idea. And we certainly need to make sure that our collections reflect what it is that our users want and that we find not only the 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 paper books, but also the digital content that they're interested in. We have um, the largest circulation in our in our region here of ebook content, and we subscribe to Hoopla, and we have streaming audio and video content. So we give to people what it is that they want. So better collections. I think we really need to focus on on making those collections something that people want to uh, that reflect what they're interested in. I think another area that I, we focused on in our award application was local history. You see there's a picture of me here in front of a fundraising project that our library had where an artist created three-dimensional hand sculpted tiles that reflected the history of our community and it was enormously popular. I often say that public libraries, the only unique thing or, the, or probably the most important unique thing about each of us is our local history and that we have a, a responsibility, a very important one, to make sure that we do all we can to archive, present, promote, and talk about that and make things available for people who are exploring and interested in that. And we have created a lot of digital resources, a regionally acclaimed database on uh, local history material. Our local history programs, we have one a month. They're usually attended by 100, 150 people. Um, and then they're, they're some of our most popular activities. There's a picture there again of our old library and we feature that on this tile uh, mural that is now installed in 
our library, and you can't see, but behind my head is actually a tile sculpted of new library. Yeah, Rosemary, I did have a question. Was is your sure. was your old library one of the Carnegie libraries? It looks no. similar. Ah, it okay. does look it does look similar, it Christian, like because it's, be, yeah. It, yeah, it was built in 1927, which of course is the era of the Carnegie Library. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But just happened yeah. to be at the same time, but just not not related to his project. Not related to his, but a very similar yeah. one. The the, yeah. the Wisner family, Albert Wisner, who our library is named after, uh, was a very wealthy real estate tycoon from Chicago who settled. Mm -hmm. Had family roots here in Warwick, and he, when he died, there was left money for the library to be built with the stipulation that the the community support its operation, which is almost a, a carbon copy of the Carnegie formula. So oh, well, it's not okay. a Carnegie. Well, it's not a Carnegie Library. It, mm -hmm. it, it was just it was, may as well have been. <laughs> yes. Inspired well, by Carnegie. <laughs> uh, indeed, indeed. Yes. Ah, okay. Um, so here is a picture. Um, this is my section here where I talk about uh, the uh, another component of, well, we were working on this application. And I have to say this application took us probably... I would say a really a, a solid year of just meeting. I mean, we had a committee that worked on it. We talked about it. We said, look, you know, what are the chances of us actually winning this award? Well, maybe they're not that great. So let's not worry about that so much. Let's just say, what would we want to be doing um, and what would we want to be saying about ourselves in an award application? And let's start tweaking things a little bit and make sure that everything we do, if we put it through the lens of applying for this award, would it come up? I mean, would it come up? Would it would it make sense? And and, and while that's kind of a, sort of a vague wishy-washy thing probably to say, what I'm trying to communicate is is that if you start to look a little bit differently about what it is you're doing, how it is you're prioritizing your limited resources, and you think I have to stand up and be and shout this from the rooftops, you might change your response to it. Um, a, you know, a little example would be I'd often, we'd be in a staff meeting and someone said, well, you know, somebody wants us to have a paper shredder here, simple like that. And, um, and then someone would say, what do they need a paper shredder for? Can't they just rip their paper up or, you know, go through these hall long conversations about what do they need a paper shredder for? And so I would often, to the chagrin of some of my staff, say, well, is that what the best small library would do? Ask why do they need it? Well, maybe you just go out and buy a paper shredder because it doesn't cost you that much money and people would like to have one. So, I mean, that was, it, maybe it got a little annoying and hopefully the rest of my staff isn't listening to this so they'll chime in later but but um, that was kind of how we tried we prepared ourselves to write this application and put it forward our and it's been our focus for many many years to look at all of our policies and make sure that our staff remember that their reason for being here is not to safeguard material but to provide a service to everybody who walks in to ensure that those people who come in feel welcome and if it's a place that they'd like to come whether it's to hang out to find a homework help for their kids or just look for a good book or attend a program that they're going to feel that this was a really nice place to be our new building construction has created this very warm and inviting at a physical space, but we really needed to make sure that those things that can often get in our way in public libraries, which are our policies and our staff so who are who are not focusing always on the main purpose for their being there can sometimes get in our way. And so we uh, went through a fairly rigorous process of looking at our policies. We made it much easier to check out library material without your library card. Some of you probably laugh when you hear that because you already do it, but others of you may know that it's, um, you know, sometimes we get a little hung up on, on having to have everything just the way that it was and, and things being a, more of the DMV experience than, uh, as I like to call my, to talk to my library staff about, than, than, a, than a real service and friendly atmosphere. So um, we did a lot of policy changing and, and a lot of customer service training as well. We also focused on what we call here our online branch, which is our website. Um, you can all go to it. At, this is our URL here after, the, after my talk, and you can um, look at it. But we try very hard to make sure that there's, there's information is easy to find, that it's current, it's updated. We have, like many of you, online registration, places you can, you can um, reserve material and all that um, 
is pretty typical for most libraries. But we made sure that we didn't ignore it, that it was kept up to date, that it was definitely was refreshed with new pictures and photos because we considered it just another place for people to come and meet us and be a part of what we're all about here at the library. Um, we, again, I talked a little bit about our warm and comfortable spaces. People, we have, we never used to have this age group, this demographic that's represented in this slide here, just hanging out at the library doing work. And now we are struggling to find enough spaces for just about everybody who loves to come in and and um, do whatever it is they want to do. Um, here, of course, is a beautiful shot of a young child doing what we all love to see them do, which is read a book. Um, we also focused for this application on our technology, making sure that not only our hardwired computers were up to date and the fastest we could make available, but also that we had Wi-Fi and um, laptops available and gadgets available and all kinds of training available um, for people to learn how to use these, um, the newest and latest technology. Here is one of our tech partners, which is a volunteer from our community. He's a retiree from a, a tech job with Verizon, and he now teaches Excel at our classes. Um, and we have a, have a variety of other people who do that as well. Um, another thing that we did was that we embraced in our community this um, online bulletin board that we have, and it's called Warwick Valley Commonplace, which it was originally started by uh, by the village, and then it kind of lost its focus and lost its uh, priority for, for a while, and a lot of people in the community were upset about that, and they wanted to see it continue, and so the library um, rescued it basically and it's actually we're about to launch it. We spent the last six months in developing it and um, it's very, going to be very exciting people. We've had focus groups here at the library to talk about it, what people would like to see and it's basically a community meeting place again online and it's called Warwick Valley Commonplace. Um, you know, we have teens and tech, which is also a very important part of our tech focus, not just in terms of the educational aspect. Here we have some, some teens who are at a, a teen program on coding, but we also use our teens, as many of you do, to um, help some of our other folks who like to learn how to use their gadgets. So there are teen tech helpers. Another thing that we do, and I hope I'm not going over too much time here, is I do want to give you guys a chance to ask me questions. I'm sure you probably have them. Um, this is, we focus on our, our community's talents. We showcase it. Warwick is very famous for the, it's a large, vibrant art community. And so in our library, we have art exhibits, um, monthly art exhibits that rotate. We don't actually accept donations of permanent art. We just save our walls for rotating exhibits. And um, this is exhibit right here. You see some of our artists came together for this photo. This is a, one of the exhibits we do, which is a quarterly community showcase where each artist contributes one piece to a theme. But in our lower level gallery, we also have a single artist who can um, can show up to 40 to 50 pieces and they're done on a monthly basis. We've been open since 2009 and we have that space booked for another year, a year out um, for a new, a new exhibit each month. So that's pretty incredible. And of course, by showcasing the talent of all of the people in our community, we bring those people not only into the library, but they feel really a part of the library as if, um, you know, that, that it reflects them and they take a great enormous amount of pride in that and are then, of course, as we all know, translate that into support. And here's another one of our young artists who's created, um, these are our recycled art, uh, farm implements that she's made into art. So how do we accomplish this and how did we get to this uh, place? Of course, we have, we did it through the help of an enormous amount of people. Uh, is, and as I say here, it takes a village to apply for the best small library in America award, let alone win it. And our village consists of our staff. This is um, some of our staff. We actually have 28 staff members, but um, we have only 10 full-time staff members. The rest are part-time. We are open seven days a week, 70 hours a week. So we really stretch people very, very thinly across there. But we are managed to do this because all of our staff are here. 
because they are dedicated and excited to be a part of what we are doing and what we have done here in the community has done nothing but to fuel their dedication and focus and enthusiasm. In addition to the staff, we have our friends of the library. We have actually over 2,000 friends, but um, the core of our friends group is about 30 people who work. Um, they, they, they actually man a bookstore for used book sale, books, which is very common, I know, in libraries, but they do all sorts of other programs in the library as well. And they hear that you have them, they were the ones who ran the World Book Night when that was an event that was still going on. We also have our Library Board of Trustees. Here we have a picture of them with our department heads, and of course they are um, instrumental. Many of them have been on our trustees for some time, but we do have some fresh blood as well, and they um, really shepherd the library through a lot of some of the challenges that we need to get through and are very supportive not only of the staff but of me as well. In addition to our library board and staff and volunteers and friends, um, we have our community partners. And they, uh, this is just a photo of some of them. They include the mayor, the superintendent, the superintendent of schools, um, principals of the schools, our local bookstore owner, our Warwick Historical Society, our town historian. It's just our chamber of commerce. I mean, they all are a part of our library and a part of our library success. Our foundation is also a big part of what we do here at the library. They, in fact, have an annual, very successful annual appeal that raises over $70,000 a year to uh, help us put on all of these programs that we're able to do that are so successful. So um, that is my story. Uh, and I know I probably was rambling a bit there, but I would like to, I know I don't have too much time, I would like to, to encourage you to tell your story. I mean, we are no different than all of you folks out there, and I'm a little uh, hesitant to say of if I have some special secret here about, about how to accomplish this, because there really is no secret. It is just um, dedication and passion and hard work and persistence, and then uh, the most important part is tell your story to your community to get the support you need, and then keep broadcasting it out as far and wide as you can. Mm -hmm. So, can I ask if there's um, can I ask if there's any questions or? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Is Thank a good you time for that. Of mm -hmm. course, yes, definitely. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Yes, if anyone has any questions, um, there's a couple right now, but if you do have questions, um, just a reminder, in your GoToWebinar interface, there's a questions section, a little tab you can open up, and you can type in there and ask any of your questions to Rosemary and any of other speakers throughout the day. Um, so go ahead and type right into there. Um, someone wants to know, Rosemary, how much did your patron activity increase once you built your new library? Our patron activity increased by about, I would say, tenfold. Wow. Um, we had a very, we had a very little library before, and we had no room to do anything. We had no, we had no program space. We did our story times in this basement area where um, we had to move the tables and the bookshelves and everything else just to get ten people around it. And so when I came in 2001, well, part of building support to build a new library was what I did was I just started doing programs all over the town. I just I went to the school, I went to the town hall, I went wherever they would let me go, we would do programs. And, you know, they were limited, but they were at least a way of, you know, connecting with people and beginning to show them what we could do. And I've, I've been a firm believer of that people have asked us, especially with their new building, how did you manage to get from that little place to this big place? So anyway, that was uh, that was huge, a tremendous increase um, in it. Like I said, we're, we have to build a new parking lot. When we only had two spaces before, we now 60 spaces are never enough every day. And you said that's already not enough. They, they already want need not more. <laughs> so what the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is the your well I got how many what is your population served or how many registered users do you guys have is that, well, is that two different numbers <laughs> yes yeah it always is yeah. I think well, maybe yeah. some communities are able to get every single person in a library car but yeah. we have uh, 23,000 plus residents in the Warwick Valley Central School District which is our library's uh, 
district mm -hmm. the geographic boundaries. It's 108 square miles. We have probably close to 16,000 library card holders. Mm -hmm. And you know, the number we often ask then of those, how many are actually using the library? You know, it's, it's probably a, a you know a smaller number, but a large group would come here be you know, a lot. So we have we have you know maybe uh, 2,000 visitors a month that come through the library. I'm not so great at all my statistics, but hopefully <laughs> okay. there aren't too many. Hopefully there aren't too many more of those questions because I have to look them all up. But. No, no, that's okay. Well, I, the only mm -hmm. other one is um, actually about funding. Um, what is your um, well, I need to mention this. What are your funding sources? Where does the money okay. come from for a lot of these things? And I'm sure that I know you mentioned some things. It's, it's all over the yeah. place, but. Yeah, well, you know, but largely our funding largely is, is public support. We have a, mm -hmm. uh, we have an annual library levy vote and we ask for support from the community, which is, translates into taxes. 90% um, of our support is public support and we get it 90% of it through taxes. But that being said, we also, you know, write grants for programming and we have a foundation that raises funds for us and we use those. Um, we have a $1.5 million budget, which I know for some of you probably sounds like a ton of money and others are not hardly not enough, but um, our budget when we were in that tiny little building was five hundred thousand uh, dollars. So oh, wow. we, okay. you know, so it, Huge that was change. yeah, big change, yeah. big change, big change. But you know, twenty three thousand people. That meant that from you know people were paying maybe uh, eighty dollars more a year for a new library because there was just so many people to spread that across that cost across. Yeah, so that's not bad for a person, yeah. And, yeah, and once they got a sense of that, this this is this is the tough part, because they thought, oh my gosh, an eight and a half million dollar building, that's so much money. But then when they got a sense of that, everybody's paying for it, and only then they realized that you know somebody has a five million dollar home, which there aren't very many of those around here, but a very expensive home, they're going to pay a little bit more. But the average person was paying eighty dollars extra a year. It, mm. They thought, oh, wow, this is definitely worth it. So, mm -hmm. And this might relate to a couple of questions. A couple of people have asked about your friends group, because if you can explain more yeah. about that, and how did you get 2,000 friends of the library? <laughs> right. Well, 2,000 not active friends. I'm not going to – I've been, been accused of hyperbole, but this <laughs> is – that I just had to review the list because we're, they're doing a, a advocacy for our annual vote here in April. And there are there's 2,000 people on their list, which means 2,000 people respond to their mailing for, a, for um, becoming a member of the Friends. Uh, our, when I came here, we did have a Friends group, but it was actually disbanding because um, the library had a a failed referendum in 1996, which was very demoralizing, and folks were still kind of depressed, and the friends group just just wanted it all to, you know, put their heads under a pillow and go home. So they did, and we just started all over again. Um, I met the president, current president of our friends when I first started working here in the lobby of the library with her baby in a in a little baby carrier, and now you know he's about to graduate from high school. So, it. Uh, but she's a dynamic leader. She, she, you know, together we were able to involve them in doing a lot of things. I made sure that I was that they had time uh, with me. That I didn't delegate this important relationship to someone else. That they understood that they were central to the library's success. And I'm at every single one of their meetings, every single one of their events. You know to reinforce that and uh, it just grew and grew and then of course with the successful building there was more and more excitement and now we have a, a, a bookstore for them that they love, they take ownership of and they really, we have over 40 volunteers in the bookstore on a monthly basis. We have over 100 volunteers actually work in our library. So um, we're able to find opportunities for them to be involved. Um, you know, I consider that a huge important part of building our advocacy and our support here, which is to say, yes, we'll find some way you can be involved. What do you like to do? Let's figure it out. You know, we right. sit down and talk about it. Is that bookstore part of your, in your new building, or is that elsewhere located? It's, out in our, it's in our new building. It's on the lower level by the children's room. 
I didn't give you pictures of everything, but That's but it's on the lower level by our uh, children's area, and it's not it's not huge, it's, mm -hmm. but it's a space to call their own. And it's it, nice to have a separate if, dedicated space that's always there for that too. I know lots of libraries do book sales when yeah. they can in wherever they can set it up, you know, on you know a pop up kind of thing. But that's nice when you can have specific space set aside and dedicated yes. to that purpose. And that yeah. they, you know, and you have to work on that relationship too. It's their space, but it's inside our library. So you know, right. <laughs> they're always asking me, can I, can we push this out here? Or can I get this or that? So I'm always working with them to try to, to you know, encourage them to to explore new things. Mm -hmm. But our friends group is is just a huge part of of our advocacy, our voter turnout is much larger than than is typical for our region anyway, and we uh, they work very hard at making sure folks know how important that vote is every year to keep our library as vibrant as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, someone wants to know if you do any sort of a volunteer appreciation for them, like a volunteer appreciation. Oh, yeah. Event. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, you can't appreciate people too much, and I'm one no. of ten children and I like it, nobody ever appreciated me when I was oh. growing up so it doesn't cut out it doesn't come naturally to me but I I, I learned my lesson many many years ago it's extremely important so we do a lot of things for our volunteers but we have an annual pre appreciation luncheon in April and we get 60 to 80 of our hundred volunteers who come to that every year and our, uh, we have something called a pretty committee here in our library, which basically does a lot of recycled book art, and they often will make little things for them, bookmarks out of recycled books, and, and we have a luncheon, and we have a speaker come, or some of our leaders in the community just to express appreciation for what they do. So yes, mm -hmm. we pay... I guess if I were to call this presentation anything, it's really about, you know, you pay very special attention to these relationships. These mm -hmm. people in your community, um, inside your library and out, are just really important, you know, and they need to, you need to nurture those, and if it's not your natural, you know, personality styles, you're going to have trouble, but obviously it's mine, so mm -hmm. it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, going back to some more specifics, um, the new programming space in your building, how large is that? How much new, more space do you have now? Uh, well, we have space. We have one uh, programming area we call it a uh, community room, and it seats about 100. It's nice. not huge. It's, it's not an auditorium with a, you know seating and that kind of thing, but it's just a big room, and we have a projector, a screen, an overhead screen where we show our movies and and where presenters will present programs. We do and we do our computer training in there. We have a laptop cart with 12 laptops on it, and we bring that in so it morphs into a computer lab, and then mm -hmm. we take those out and put tables in, and then the Mahjong players are in there for an hour, and then something else is going on. It's very, very busy little space. Mm -hmm. But it's nice, I, it's obviously having a nice, even you said it was not an auditorium, and actually I think in some that's good, that it can be yeah. transformed yeah. into something else as needed. Absolutely. Whatever kind of and setup is. you need. And it, it is yeah. it is on a daily basis. We had a little bit of trouble with the fact that it, we have a cleaner who comes at 5 in the morning and leaves at 9 in the morning. And at first we had some trouble with how are we getting this room changed four times a day for all of these different programs. And I was laughing at something Kathy said because true to our staff, and I think the success of our library is that our staff just got together and said, okay, this is how we're going to do it. Monday to Friday, Monday to Sunday, whatever time period, we're going to assign each department. Their job is to make sure the room is set up and is ready for the next group who's coming in. So nobody, it doesn't fall too strongly on one person. And you know, we're we're talking about just moving chairs. Everything's pretty easy to, you know, we don't have a lot of heavy equipment. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's how we do it. We, people mm -hmm. walk in, well, what day is it? Whose turn is it? So, <laughs> yep. so it's a really nice, it's just a very nice feeling. And that actually kind of, together. having your, your staff work together like that and really, and I, I use this a lot, you take ownership and care about the library, that actually really so question someone asked is, how did you specifically address staff that always responded with things like, why do we need a paper shredder, why are we doing this, and <laughs> focused on programming and dreaming a bit bigger than being frustrated by the little things, you know, how did you 
I mean, obviously, you, you think yourself, you're just, you're a gung-ho kind of <laughs> person. Yeah, right? yeah, um, yeah. That, well, leadership helps, leadership helps, and, um, you know, uh, how did I get them to do that? Because I have to say, when I first came, there was a bit of a challenge there. I think, I think it's just consistently voicing the message, what is important. I mean, I still do it today, and I started off doing it when I was here. Why are you giving these people a hard time? What are you doing? And, you know, I, and I've been here for 15 years, as long as anybody now, so everyone knows, but, you, but it's a consistent... And consistently reminding people why it is that they're here and then supporting them into doing what they're doing and giving them the complete power to make decisions that need to be made within the confines of the job that they have to do and to not and to talk to them and give them training and, and tell them yes you know this is what we're gonna do and this is how um, this is where we want to go, so you've got to, got to help us with it. I know it all sounds cushy, but it's a day-to-day, -day, daily grind. I just had to do it before I got on the phone for this webinar. Somebody came in and wanted to check out a book for their wife that was on hold, and they um, didn't have their library card of their of the wife. And so the, the normal response, we all learn it in libraries, privacy is huge. It's a big deal. We're not going to mm -hmm. check out a book for somebody else. And... Um, uh, the person left, and I stood there with a staff member, brought them to my office, and I said, well, what else could you have done? Yeah, privacy is important, I get that, but what else do you think you could have done? And we talked, through it, and we talked about it, and she said, well, I guess I could have tried to call her, his wife and see if it was okay. I said, yeah, that might have been nice, yeah. <laughs> because then you're not violating her privacy, and then you would have helped her. Right, reach so, the extra, do the, take yeah, the extra so, effort. But, but we, we all forget to do, the, to do that. It's a constant... Mm -hmm. It's a constant uh, challenge. Oh, sure. Now, to, 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 um, I would assume this is a yes, but I'm going to ask if someone did ask it. Um, <laughs> do you have a strategic plan or long-range plan that you have for the library to keep up with these yes. tools and things you're doing? You definitely have something yes. like that. You'd yeah. have to for no, something that large, yeah. Yeah, and we, we definitely do, as on our website, the current one, which is a, we're in the process of beginning an update to that. And this, mm -hmm. this April, we've already... Uh, We've already contracted with an outside uh, consultant to help us with that, which I think is really important to have somebody from the outside leading you because you can't look at yourself and evaluate yourself as effectively. Oh, yes. Anyway, that's my opinion. If somebody that's else my opinion. Opinion. can look at it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we definitely do, and it's huge. It's hugely important for me as a leader to, to have, a, have, have a roadmap like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, really, really important. Absolutely. Um, a more specific question. Um, where'd I go? Oh, uh, this pa <laughs> the paper shredder. That, apparently that's caught people's attention. <laughs> Um, have there been any issues no. specifically like noise complaints? I know you have a bigger building, or is there somewhere yeah. where there won't be that kind of a <laughs> yeah problem? No, no. There, you know, to be honest with you, the, the paper shredder it is a small example, but I can see why people are focusing in on it. <laughs> it's um. Well, it's not something it's, I don't think I've ever heard of. A, I, not, I don't believe I've heard of the library offering that as a specific service. Lots of all sorts of different. Yeah, things. that's a yeah. I know, but it's such a tiny thing, and so it's so easy to accommodate. Like we have, right. we have cases of staplers and pencil, you know, things out there by the copier, so people can actually do stuff with their copier. Um, you know, no, it doesn't. It doesn't create a. I think that that's an interesting question. It brings up the point that people are sometimes they're always thinking about why not to do something and 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 why this is going to be so horrible. And yes, it might create an issue where someone say, "Wow, that's awfully noisy. Could you do it somewhere else?" And I'll say, "Okay, let's try and do it somewhere else." Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, just react and respond. Yeah, yeah, try it out in the experiment. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, just two more things we're going to do because we are getting close to the end time here. Um, okay. Someone didn't have a comment. Um, if anyone else is wondering about that whole husband trying to check out books for a wife, uh, yeah. someone here says that Seattle Public Library actually does an option that you can have a message added to your record that says who yes. you are allowed to check out for. Like we are spouse, we are allowed, I'm giving him permission yep. to do this, I'm giving her permission. So that could be an option to help. Um, yeah, thank that you. Kind of yes, we know about that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, Last thing is um, your application, your actual application for the Best Small Library in America. Is that available um, anywhere for people to read? I'm not sure how that is. That 
Do you guys well, you know the Marketers we, Library Journal have that posted? I wasn't. I, I wasn't no, sure. you know they they. In fact, that's a very good question because that's of course what I asked too when we were doing. So you don't want to see season. what is the previous one submitted so we can get an idea. You know we, they. Yeah. They have never. Um, they don't ever make them available, but I certainly can make it available. I have it. I mean, I just have it. To be honest with you, but if right. you like me to. There's no rules. That wants tell you, you can't. <laughs> Share it. No, there's no yeah. rules that tell me they can't. I yeah. am sitting here, and I, so if somebody wants it, just email me at, at our library at rcooper at rcls.org, and I'd be happy to send it to you. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, that mm -hmm. is actually grabbed all the questions for you for this one. That's great. Thank you so much, Rosemary, for being with us. Um, as I, I was hoping we could get this, the best small library in America on. It fits perfectly in with our theme, obviously. <laughs> uh -huh. um, talk small libraries. Um, yeah. I, I hope she wasn't a little too freaked out. I was actually you know, potentially yeah, pretty last minute there. stalking uh, the, the yeah. waiting and waiting for the announcement to come out because they wait until the very end of January, Library Journal does, to announce these this award. They do. And that's when we are working on our agenda for this conference because we're at the end of February. And so I was every day re searching and refreshing my search and checking my alerts and as soon as that announcement came out I was I found Rosemary's website found her email and luckily she was available so <laughs> yeah and I'm only too happy you know I hope you all realize that I'm nobody special after listening to me for a half an hour <laughs> and that you know you definitely wall well within your reach and your grasp so go for it and if mm -hmm. you have any questions if you're gonna do it and want to talk some more mm -hmm. give me a call or email yeah. me or yeah can you repeat mm -hmm. your your email address again there sure it's r cooper at r c l s Org. Great. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks for being with us, Rosemary. Okay. Sure. It was a pleasure. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. That is our second session. Second? Yes, yeah, second session for the day. Um, wrapped up.